Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, that is Olinjowskis. Today is the 29th of November 2019, so welcome everyone. Welcome to this Friday's morning session and welcome to, to the last trading day of November. Um, so yep, as always guys, we'll have a look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, but before we do that, Let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, also just before we jump in, quick mentioning of our JFD uh, YouTube channel here to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page which we update on a daily basis. So feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research uh, tab above here. <clears throat> but for now. Let's jump into the charts, guys. Now, the first one I want to touch on here is the uh, the FTSE 100. Now, the FTSE yesterday closed slightly in the red. Um, in general, the uh, the European equities uh, ended yesterday's trading session um, in the red a little bit. Now, um, of course, uh, you can see from the technical picture here on the FTSE, and this is what I talked about previously, where I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on the 7,441 zone, because as you can see, uh, it continues to act as a good area of resistance. We needed to see a nice good close above this in order to get comfortable with higher levels. For now, um, the uh, it's not really looking that way. For example, it, it seems that the index would like to correct a little bit more. Now, looking at the cash index, because the the Euro European session is not uh, start has not started yet, uh, but looking at the cash index, it is already sliding below the 7,400 mark. Um, so let's see how this is going to play out today. In a way, it could drift a little bit lower here. The the um, the bulls still have an opportunity to step in somewhere around here near the 7,343 mark. Um, if it holds, we could see a nice rebound and a push back. To to the upside um, but still for us to get comfortable with the upside we need to see that break and ideally a close of a daily close above the 7441 mark um, in terms of the downside we'll start considering slightly lower areas if we see a drop below the 7324 mark um, and then of course in addition to that a drop below the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart could do the trick here for more sellers so that's why guys for now um, for now, let's see how this is going to play out. But again, it seems that it wants to drift a little bit lower. At, at least it's according to the cash index. Um, don't get me wrong. The uh, Asian uh, markets are in the red. I mean, this uh, the, they've ended the trading session in the red. Um, so, of course, that may weigh in. And, of course, don't get me wrong. Uh, we do have some, of course, there's some political problems that are on the agenda. So, for example, the... Um, U.S. signing the Hong Kong bill uh, yesterday. So, the, well, Donald Trump signing the the Hong Kong bill yesterday. Um, so, which doesn't really work well with China, and of course, the this could uh, lead to some uh, further escalation. So, in a way, um, all the positivity surrounding the trade talks could be wiped out. But then again, this is for now. Uh, this is just an idea. we we'll, we're still waiting for uh, uh, to see what China, how China will respond but if you want to get more details on that uh have a read through the uh daily uh daily report that's going to get released in about in a couple of hours here on our on our website but um jumping into a few other instruments and that's gold a quick mentioning of gold so in a way this is something as well to keep an eye on because if the equities start sliding then well 
gold could start picking up here again and maybe pushing to the upside so the way given that it, it drifted lower drifted uh, can it drifted lower below the 1462 zone it still remained above the 1451 area right here so in a way it's kind of stuck here in limbo and it's kind of waiting uh for the next move uh especially in the equity markets so um and uh, of course investors are keeping an eye on this one as a safe haven so in case the the stock market starts reversing to the downside uh, this could start picking up uh, the momentum here the uh, the upside momentum um, but again from the technical side how you could play this one out is keep your eyes on this 1462 mark if we get a push above this then this could open the path towards slightly higher levels we'll initially aim for the 1473 mark or even the 200 EMA of course, if it continues to climb higher and breaks above the 1479 mark, then uh, we will aim for this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 4th of September. And then we'll take it from there, guys. We'll see what he wants to do after because overall you can see that, yes, we are still below this downside line. So um, the overall trend is still to the downside, but a bit of correction could be possible. But that's, let's, like I said, for now, let's keep an eye on some of these levels. If this suddenly starts dropping below the 1451 mark, then, well, I mean, we'll start considering the uh, a possible test of the 1445, which is the current lowest point of November. Now, uh, basically, the um, basically this commodity has only one day uh, to try maybe and create a new uh, a low a low for November. But again, let's see how this is going to play out. Let's let's keep an eye on the equity markets as well. Um, DXY. Uh, something that I wanted to, just to quickly mention, um, still the same game plan remains. We are still uh, waiting for this break above the 98.45. Uh, we're trading above this upside support line taken from the low of the 1st of November. So in a way, it's kind of uh, still looking okay for uh, DXY. Um, of course, uh, we are not. We cannot do really anything yet uh, because for us to consider the downside and now I need to probably adjust this level because the more it goes uh, sideways the more uh, kind of the 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 potential breakout uh, level to the downside kind of uh, gets risen um, so in a way with the downside we need to see a break of this upside line and a drop below the 98 zone before we could examine lower areas in terms of the upside as I said the 98.45 still that that level still remains as the one that we we're watching for the upside. Um, jumping into a few pairs now very quickly, AUDJPY, I looked at this one this, this week and basically still the same idea remains. Um, it continues to drift in a way sideways, but it's, it's struggling to drop below the uh, this upside support line um, taken from the low of the 23rd of August. So this medium term upside support line continues to hold the rate uh, from moving lower. Um, on the other hand, uh, it, at the same time, it's failing to push above the 74.30 zone so in a way for it's it, we cannot really do anything until we see that clear break so with the downside if we do see a drop below the um, below this upside line and then we see a drop below this little area right here near the 73.89 zone which is uh, marked by the low of the 27th of November now this is where it could become interesting for the sellers um, in the short run of course because uh, still the uh, the pair could drift lower but it could drift lower up until this key area of support near the uh, 73.34 mark um, Again, we'll keep an eye on this one. We'll keep an eye on. on we'll see how it how it performs here. But uh, first, let's see which way this is going to get. We got to get a breakout. If it's going to break through the upper side here, uh, through the 74.30, then yes, we will aim for slightly higher levels. Um, Euro JPY. Now then, uh, the similar story. In, in here as well. Yesterday I talked about the Euro GPY and basically I was saying that we needed to see a daily close um, above this 120.60 uh, level but as you can see we only got a break, a false breakout and then quickly kind of uh, drifted back down. So it continues to trade below this level. Um, don't get me wrong it's uh, it still has a chance to push higher uh, because we are still above this upside support line taken from the low of the 14th of November November. We're currently above today's pivot, which is roughly around the 120.50, and we're very, we're 
very not far, let's, if I can say it that way, uh, we're very not far from the 120.60 barrier. So in a way, just we need some sort of a, a good news here. And uh, basically, we, we could see this one drifting to the upside. But again, until that happens, we cannot really talk about that. We cannot really consider that. So in a way, if let's say we get a close of at least a four hour candle, then it increases the chances of a further drift higher. But um, ideally, of course, we would like to see a daily close. But Let's keep an eye on this one. Let's see how this is going to play out. It could be an event, an interesting day today. Uh, we do have some data, interesting data coming out. So, yep, uh, let's keep an eye on this one, guys. I mean, we do have the European uh, Eurozone uh, preliminary CPI figures. Let me just double check that very quickly quickly for you so we do have the yes that we do have the preliminary cpi figures coming out of the core and the year on uh, the core and the headline um also the unemployment rate for the whole um region as well so something to keep an eye on but um before that we do have some other figures like the german unemployment uh, numbers so something to keep an eye on as well um so yep guys keep an eye on the euros uh, and the on the euro gpy here uh usd cad also some data to keep an eye on today of course we do have the uh, Canadian GDP figures. Um, so the the focus will fall, of course, on the uh, Q and Q annualized number um, and the and the uh, the year and year and the month on month numbers. So basically, keep or keep your eyes, guys, on the Canadian figures today. And uh, in yesterday, I talked about USD CAD. Uh, what I was saying that we're going to remain neutral until it's kind of stuck in this in the uh, in this area right here because it's on one hand it's still above this upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 29th of October and on the other hand it's still within this uh, falling channel pattern uh, since around which is which started around the 20th of November so uh, again we need to see a clear move either through the um, upper upper bound of the falling channel but ideally a push up of the 1.3328 zone could do the trick here for more buyers uh so we'll keep an we'll wait for a break above this level and in terms of the downside a drop below the 1.3250 zone could send this one uh a, a, a bit lower so let's let's wait for for the data guys as well and let's keep an eye on this on this pair now uh quick mentioning of something that you probably don't look at very often so the usd sec and the usd knock here that the two the two pairs that I've got now. Uh, we do have some data coming out today as well. So we have some uh, Swedish uh, GDP numbers uh, to keep an eye on, which are uh, coming out shortly. Um, so in a way, looking at this technical picture on USD Sec, uh, you can see that the mm, the the pair is kind of trading here below some of these downside lines, and on and basically one is a very steep one here taken from the high uh, of the 20th of November so very short term but the the thing is that the pair has found some very good air a very good support near this level right here near the low of, of the 4th of November so basically near the uh, lowest the, the, the current lowest point of November um, don't get me wrong it will be quite interesting to see if this pair can actually create a new low for November um, for now as long as it kind of let's say stays below this downside line yes everything's kind of leaning more towards the downside uh, so even though it, it is currently pushing a little bit to the upside but to get comfortable with the downside now you probably understand we need to see a drop below this a low, the lowest point of November, the current lowest point of November, November near the 9.5385 9 zone. So if we do get a drop below this, then yes, we will aim for lower areas. Um, a good level to watch underneath here is, of course, this one right here. But don't get me wrong, it's quite well far away from here you know so that's why I keep your eyes on the uh, on some of these areas first so one of one of them being the near 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 9.52 uh, 24 zone and the other one could be uh, this little uh, drop lower <clears throat> Um, let me just quickly put this one on the chart. There we go. So this little drop uh, near the uh, 9.49 zone. So let's keep an eye on this one, guys. And in terms of the upside here, of course, we need to see a push ab uh, above this uh, downside line before we could start examining some higher levels. We could um, aim 
for this level right here, which is the um, uh, an inside an inside swing high of yesterday near the 9.5765. A nice good pu push above this could open the path towards slightly higher levels. But again, we're not going to be very positive here because we could be approaching some other uh, downside lines here, some other tentative downside lines, which, for example, like this one here. So uh, that's why the upside could be uh, limited. Um, USD knock. Also, we have some uh, uh, unemployment numbers for coming out from Norway. So the best, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. The best scenario here is that we are coiling up. We can see that it's stuck here between these two lines in a way forming a triangle. Um, so we need to see a nice good break through one of the key support and resistance areas before uh, we, we could get excited about slightly higher levels. So in, on the upside, we'll keep an eye on this 9.1935 mark, which is the high of yesterday, and on the downside, a drop below yesterday's low near the 9.5. 1560 could in a way <clears throat> excuse me guys my voice is going down uh, could open the path towards lower areas um, again we're what we're looking here for is maybe to try to capture maybe a spike or a drop um, so for now we're just waiting and we're gonna see what it wants to do here and uh, if we do get a push higher then uh, the next target we uh, we're gonna be aiming for is going to be this little high here uh, near the 13th of, or the high of the 13th of November near the 9.2265 zone um, and in terms of the down Downside, if we do get a drop here lower, then uh, we'll consider a possible move towards the 9.0950 territory, roughly, roughly around here. And the last pair for this session is going to be the euro dollar. So uh, still, we are neutral. We, as I've mentioned yesterday, we need to see a drop below the 1.0989 level before we could examine lower areas, because this way the pair would confirm a forthcoming lower low, and we could stand and we could start aiming for the 1.0966 or even the 1.0939. Uh, in terms of the upside, from the very short-term perspective, maybe a push above the 1.1043 could maybe do the trick here for more buyers. The only thing is that we're gonna uh, we're gonna remain uh, very careful and and uh, here because again, if it travels higher here, then yes, it, it has a chance to drift higher, but. To be honest, there are some obstacles here on above that which could, in a way, slow it down. So that's why we do have our um, upside scenario starting from the 1.10 93 uh, level because this way the uh, the the pair would break this key area of resistance and then we could start aiming for higher levels. Okay, guys, I really hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for sticking around and watching it till the end. Um, if you want to join me later on at my traders tea time, as always, that's 14:15 GMT. We'll have a look at some of these instruments again, um, some new ones, and uh, we'll see how the market has reacted in general and uh, yeah guys i hope you have a wonderful trading day stay safe be very careful don't forget the u.s session closes early today um so that's uh, one o'clock one o'clock eastern time u.s eastern time of course and uh yep let's keep an eye on that and let's keep an eye on the political developments and so that's why have your stop loss in place guys thank you very much and bye bye